Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Monty Evans, I'm a program manager, uh, state policy advisor for uh, BJA. Today's agenda, uh, first, Office of Justice Programs and BJA, who we are and what we do. Um, BJA's mission and forensic science grant program. We also cover the strengthening the medical examiner system program, background and funding information. Uh, the fiscal year 2022 resource information, BJA team award and the management structure. Uh, part two, um, which was my original part, uh, will cover the award management and grant monitoring activities of uh, the grant management cycle and award acceptance, addressing award conditions, grant award modifications, federal financial reports, progress reports. And in part three, we'll have the performance management and measures uh, what is performance man uh, management? Why performance measures? Performance measures accomplishments. What are the FY 2021 MEC performance measures? And web page and BJA staff contact information. Our presentation and disclaimer, uh, any opinions or points of views expressed are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official position or policies of DOJ. Names of commercial manufacturers or products or are in um, incidental only and inclusions does not imply endorsement by the authors or DOJ. Unless otherwise noted, all figures, diagrams, media and other materials used in this presentation are created by the respective authors and contributors of the presentation and research. OJP and BJ, who we are and what we do. OJP's mission is to increase public safety and improve the fair administration of justice across America through innovative leadership and programs. OJP is made of six main bureaus. You have the uh, us, the BJ Bureau of Justice Ass Assistance. We have Bureau of Justice Statistics, National Institute of Justice, the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention, Office for Victims of Crime, in Office of Sex Offender Sentencing, Monitoring, Apprehending, Registering, and Tracking. BA's mission of OJP's Forensic Science and Grant Programs, which this program is a part of. Uh, BJA's mission, BJA helps to make America community safer by strengthening the nation's criminal justice system. Its grant training, technical assistance, and policy development services provide state, local and tribal governments with cutting edge tools and best practices that they need to reduce violent and drug related crime, support law enforcement and combat victimization. Furthermore, BA is the DOJ agency dedicated to supporting forensic sciences for funding states, units of local government and other forensic service pro providers to increase capacity and efficiency, improve services, obtain the necessary resources to meet workloads, demands, and ultimately better service justice. Service of OJP's Forensic Science Grant Program. So beginning in fiscal year 20, seven forensic science grant programs originally administered and managed by the Office of Justice Programs, National Institute of Justice were transferred to BJA. These programs were the MEC program, post eviction, CBER, Paul Coverdale Competitive, Daryl formula and prosecuting cold cases in safe ITR. The C program is a competitive and discretionary grant program designed to help address medical death investigations, workforce needs to increase the number of practicing board cert certified forensic pathologists and MEC offices need to implement and follow quality standards and performances criteria in effort to provide consistent and equitable application of death investigation and services. There's two purpose areas, purpose area one, forensic pathology fellowships, and purpose area two, the MEC office accreditation. The goals of these purpose areas is to contribute to increase the supply of trained board certified forensic pathology practitioners or strengthen the quality and consistency of MEC services in their respective office, increasing public and, and, and increasing public trust in these services. Our program funding and awards. Well, the program was first initiated and awarded in um, fiscal year 2017. 
to date, 71 awards totaling $10,400,000 have been made. Congratulations to our new MEC grantees under the FY 2021. The following 13 awards were made totaling $2 million, $2 million and fifty thousand dollars. Hi all. I'm I'm Lindsay De Palma. I'm a Booz Allen consultant. I uh, support the MEC program with Thurston and Monty, um, and I just wanted to go over some resource information that's available to you as you work through the life of your award and prepare for um, future award and funding opportunities. Uh, so I guess first and foremost, these are probably the two most important resources as you work through your award. Um, there's the solicitation, which I know you used in applying for your award, but there's a lot of helpful information in the solicitation, um, uh, such as like contact information, um, allowable funding, unallowable funding, and that sort of thing. So please reference it often and keep it on hand. Um, the second, second resource that we wanted to point you to is the FAQs document. Um, and that was pro that was developed mainly for the purpose of being used while applying to the solicitation. But um, if you go through it, you'll find it has metrics guidance, contact information, again, unallowable and allowable funding. So um, please use these both of these documents and have them on hand as you work through your award. I, I think they'll come in handy. Uh, we also wanted to take the opportunity to point you to some of the funding opportunities that are upcoming. So there were two webinars that BJA presented in January. One is funding opportunities within BJA. Uh, if you'll see at the bottom of the slide, there's four um, programs that we wanted to specifically highlight for you all as um, in the MEC community, uh, there's the strengthening the MBC system program, which you're all very familiar with, um, the Paul Coverdell Forensic Science Improvement Grants Program, the Forensic Training and Technical Assistance Program, with, which is a, a completely new program for BJA, and the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grants Program. Um, and the slides that you'll find those on if you do go to the web link on this slide are um, indicated in the note. So we, we recommend that you go and look at those. There's also the federal funding process webinar. Um, this is helpful when you're applying to the award or, or, or to um, a solicitation. Goes over how to apply, how to prepare now, other things to consider. And again, we, we highly recommend that you look into these opportunities now and start preparing now uh, rather than waiting for the solicitation to hit because you'll be in a much better position for, for the funding opportunities. We also wanted to highlight uh, one report that we thought might be of interest to y'all. This is developed by NIJ's Forensic Technology Center of Excellence, or FTSE. Um, it's the landscape study on electronic case management systems for medical examiners and coroners. This report provides background information on CMS how they can be integrated into the death investigation process, product details, key considerations, best practices, and lessons learned. So at, at your convenience, take a look at this report. Um, it, it might be of interest to you. And uh, we just wanted to highlight for your awareness other resources for funding opportunities available to you. Uh, so feel free to peruse these, um, these sites at your convenience. The resource that's available to you is the BJA team. Um, I wanted to go through the award management structure and the different offices that you'll be working with throughout the, the life of your award. Uh, there are three main components. There's the policy office, the programs office, and the performance metrics team. So I'm gonna go through each of these components and provide you a little background information on each and introduce you to the POCs for each of those. So to start with, we have our programs office. The, the programs office is the first line of direct communication with you all. Um, the POCs for the programs office are Monty Evans, who you just heard from, and Alan Spanbauer. So they're responsible for reviewing and approving grant reports, grant award modifications, and processing your grant closeout. They're also available to answer programmatic, financial, and administrative questions. They're gonna be speaking after me. 
so at that time, they'll pro provide some more specific information about awards management, grant monitoring activities, and uh, general expectations. And there is, as I mentioned earlier, the policy office and the performance metrics team. So in the policy office is Thurston, who uh, didn't get to hear from, but I'm sure you'll have contact with him as you work through your award and, and myself. Um, so what we do is we're, we're typically responsible for the program development, tailoring the program to ask the needs of the community, steering the peer review and awards process, um, and providing subject matter expertise on progress reports and requested programmatic changes. The planning, performance, and impact analyst team, the PPI team, uh, is comprised of Michael Adams and Nicole Norvish, who you'll also hear from later. And they, as you can see, provide performance measure development, solicitation reviews, analytical support, visualization and graphical support, and data quality assurance. As I mentioned, they'll be speaking to you later on, and they'll provide more specific details about the performance measures and metrics associated with this particular program. So, with that, I will turn it back over to Monty to discuss the words management and grant monitoring activities. All right, thank you for that, Lindsay. All right, as mentioned, um, it's Monty, um, and as your spa, um, more importantly, um, when working with you with the award management and grant monitoring activities, um, we'll also be in the, responsible for reviewing um, any of your grant reports, uh, grant award modifications, uh, processing your closeouts, um, those areas of the um, administration portion of your grant. So these are the three areas uh, we mentioned as I just went over um, portions of the administrative um, section. Uh, we'll also go into your programmatic responsibilities as well as some of your financial administrative um, elements of the project. Uh, for programmatic, um, you know, that phase is the implementation of the projects, uh, working with you on your goals and objectives. Um, if you have any grant modifications, um, discussing what those may be, whether it's, you know, a change of scope, um, whether it's a budget modification, or just getting approval of activities. Um, myself or uh, another spa for your grant will be who you will work with. The financial portion, that's your federal uh, financial uh, reports. Um, you'll see that as FFRs, um, submitting those quarterly. Um, as well as your budget clear, uh, clearances and modifications and reallocations. Grant management cycle, uh, here's an outline um, for you that can assist you in identifying the different stages you may be in in your award. Um, I'll briefly go over some of the important highlights of uh, these, state, uh, these stages, um, but specifically award acceptance, award conditions, budget and financial information, accessing funds, grant award modifications, mandatory reporting requirements, monitoring, and award closeout. Award acceptance. The award document is a legally binding contract with the federal government, and it must be accepted by your authorized representative. Uh, the award conditions, uh, previously known as special conditions, um, now within just grants, um, they're referred to as war conditions. Um, they may be attached to an award for financial or programmatic issues requiring resolution, uh, referred to as withholding conditions. The applicants or your grantees have 45 days to accept the award through just grants from the date of the award acceptance. Please contact your spa for any questions regarding the award acceptance process or for any programmatic financial or administrative questions. Addressing the award conditions. The award conditions, again, those are the terms of the agreement of the grant award covering such areas as programmatic and financial. Um, it'll cover prohib prohibiting use of federal funds, uh, your consulting rates and proper disposition of program income. The most common, most common uh, withholdings, um, missing doc documents, is the disclosure of pending applications, uh, your disclosure of lobbying activities, or application attachments. When submitting your application initially, these are some of the things that would put a hold or withholding on your award 
and prevent budget um, using obligating any budget funds until these things are re received. Um, if you get your grant award and weren't able to, to access funds, this is the first step you would look to in your award package is your award conditions. Uh, within just grants, you can see whether or not there's a yes by your award condition or no, uh, meaning whether or not you're in compliance. Uh, the grant award administrator and financial manager must complete the grants financial management training within 120 days of grant acceptance. This is another um, award condition that can cause a hold on your account or on the award. Um, so, yes, the grant award administrator and the financial manager. That's often um, confused as whether or not it's one that has to have it or the other. Um, both uh, positions have to have clearance of this financial training, which is now um, online. So with the award conditions, uh, take note of any conditions withholding funds. Uh, grantees, you again, you may not obligate, expand, or draw down funds until withholding conditions are resolved. Um, for example, a revised budget uh, detail or budget detail narrative. Uh, this must be submitted, reviewed before any withholding is um, removed from the award. Also, you have your revised program narrative. Um, it's also um, an issue that comes up. And then the missing NEPA checklist, um, the grant or the outsourcing agency. So this must be received by both entities. So you as the grantee, you have to submit your NEPA checklist, but also in your program, if you are outsourcing, uh, the outsourcing agency in, as well must submit a NEPA checklist. All right, so they'll hold be placed on the account if either of these aren't, fun, um, aren't received. You submit to BJA for review and approval, any curricular or training materials, proposed publication reports, or any other written materials that would be published, including web-based materials and website content through funds from this grant as in within 30 days of working, day, uh, working days prior to targeting dissemination date. Also, uh, the recipient uh, shall just transmit to the BJA grants, ma um, grants manager copies of all official award-related press releases. Uh, within 10 working days prior to public release. So this has been a frequently asked question. Um, it's it's simple as just you making an announcement of the award. Um, please work with your SPA, work with your um, grant manager in um, getting approval of any press release before um, releasing these items. Grant management financial training, um, as I previous mentioned, um, the grant administrator and the financial manager must complete um, the grant, um, the grant uh, financial management training within 120 days of acceptance. This also will result in a withholding, um, and it must be completed every three years. So that's another frequently asked question. Um, you know, some of the grantees I work with say, you know, may mention that they've taken it. Yes, but it's a requirement within OJP that you, this be taken um, every three years. Um, what you would do once completed. Uh, download your PDF of your certificate and send it to your SPA. Uh, this is generally then attached to your award uh, within your uh, within just grants. As mentioned, available online. Here's the web address for being able to take that uh, training. Grant monitoring. Um, so with the grant monitoring, the monitoring activities will be conducted uh, by the program staff as well as OCFO staff, um, whether it's on-site or remote, um, through an EPDR, well, which we call our Enhanced Programmatic Desk Reviews. The monitoring allows grant managers to, A, observe compliance with requirements and progress against your project goals, identify opportunities to provide technical assistance, and ensure that adequate controls are in place to improve accountability of federal funds. So yearly, we're going to do a, a desk review um, on your grant. Um, there's a random you know, uh, monitoring that will be discussed, whether or not it will be on site by your grant manager. Um, they'll work with you. Um, you know, of course, with COVID the past two years, um, tra travel has been on hold, so it hasn't been any on site. But what has picked up is the enhanced programmatic desk review. 
uh, where it's more of an in-depth with you uh, submitting information requested from your spa and then having uh, whether it's a Zoom meeting, phone call, um, just going in depth into the program and just providing more assistance and making sure you uh, accomplish your project goals. And if you receive a EPDR or on site uh, monitoring, doesn't necessarily also mean that you're um, not to be confused with an in depth audit or that your uh, project is in jeopardy or anything. Again, uh, with the number of grants, grants are selected by various reasons just to get more in depth, as well as just giving you an opportunity to work with us and try to improve your grant project. GAMS, grant award modifications. This is used to update or change award details and are not used to confirm compliance with requirements or deliverables. So more importantly, the GAMs, they can not be approved if they are delinquent financial or programmatic reports. So some, if you logged into Just Grants, you see the big red screen going across the top, um, letting you know that you can't do anything, whether or not it's within Just Grants or ASAP. Generally, it comes back to a delinquent financial and programmatic report um, that needs to be submitted. Uh, one of the issues that's come up with the delinquent um, progress reports, um, often it may show on the end that you've um, entered information and attempted to submit the prog uh, programmatic report. However, uh, just going through it step by step and making sure at the end that you, sum that you hit submit that's really important, making sure you hit submit at the end of the um, of you entering, whether or not you're uploading or responding to the performance measure questions um, to ensure that the um, performance report was actually submitted and received. This can help get that grant out of delinquent uh, status. Three type of grant uh, GAMs, programmatic, financial and project period extensions. To fall under programmatic GAMs uh, would be a programmatic cost GAM, um, scope change GAMs, where you're altering program activities um, in an attempt to change the purpose or the project, um, change the project site, or even be changing key staff of the project. A financial GAM would be the budget clearance GAM, a budget modification GAM. And then sole source scams, which require substantial justification, must be received prior approval for any sole source procurement in excess of simplified acquisition threshold, which is currently $250,000. And lastly, the project period extension. Uh, this must be submitted at least 30 days before the end of the award. Uh, we prefer this being submitted anywhere between 30 and 90 days once you realize um, there may be an issue, may be a need to extend the project um, for a no cost extension. Um, and typically we're limited to one 12 month extension uh, with the project. Again, this is something that you would discuss with the spa, um, seeing whether or not it's, um, you know, training dates that may have been changed that you may need to project extended for, maybe it's um, completing um, the reconciliation of your of your funds. Um, you would talk to your spa to see whether or not um, three month, six month, and even a 12 month no cost extension is needed. Important reporting requirements uh, for the FFRs, um, you must report funds obligated and or expanded, not drawn down amounts. Ensure funds that have been obligated align with your approved budget. And then report for every quarter, regardless of whether or not expenses were incurred. Again, this is a frequently asked issue. Um, yes, you still would put, even if the grant uh, budget hasn't been approved at that point or cleared, you have a hold during that ten, um, standpoint, you still must submit your FFR and that's just you put um, reporting that no expenses um, were occurred. Progress reports. Performance measure questions specifically written in the solicitation. Uh, provide an uh, accurate uh, snapshot to the BJ uh, grant manager spa. And then reports must be submitted even if no activities uh, were, um, were taken. Again, um, if the budget wasn't approved, still during the standpoint of the award, actually you receiving the initial project period date, you still must submit this report and then just report that there's no activities um, currently taking place during this uh, reporting period. Important dates for your FFR reporting. 
Um, you have quarter one, January through March 31st, quarter two, April 1st through June 30th, uh, quarter three, July 1 through September 30th, and quarter four, October 1 through December 31st. Uh, here's the due dates. Um, I highly suggest everyone pop this one. Now, this is something that you can have right on your desk, so it's visible. These dates are the FFRs that must be submitted. Um, again, no activity uh, when completing it, then you would just enter zero in that space. If you need assistance with your FFRs or financial questions, um, you can contact the office of the chief financial officer. Uh, the customer service um, number is listed there. And progress reports. Uh, the progress reports have semi annual. Uh, reports and they should, mit, should be submitted within 30 days after the end of the reporting period, which are June 30th and December 31st. Um, this process will continue throughout the life of the grant. So even if you uh, request a no cost extension, again, you will have to submit um, for that next quarter or that period your semi uh, your semi annual performance measure report. Uh, your first progress report for the reporting period October 1. 2021 through December 31st, 2021 is due January 30th or was due January 30th. Um, pretty much everyone has the award has worked their way through that. That was a, um, some issues and some discussion with that, but that was um, made clear to again, no activities may have occurred during that time, but that progress report had to be submitted with no activities. Important things about the progress reports. Um, progress and accomplishments during each reported period should be relayed in your reports. Also explain any challenges that you incur. The narrative for each reporting period should provide a clear picture of how funds were utilized over the course of that reporting period in order to accomplish the project goals and objectives. Activities planned for the following six months as well. And three, uh, performance management and measures. Handled. Thank you, Mondi. Uh, this is Nicole Norvish. Like Lindsay mentioned earlier, Mike Adams and I are of the planning performance and impact team. So we are your contact for all things performance measures. Um, so let's get into it. What is performance management? It's the process by which grantees regularly collect data on grant activities to determine whether they are implementing activities as intended and achieving desired goals and objectives. And performance measures are the data that we collect through the questionnaires that you fill out. And these are established by the by BJA for each individual program. And all of these are posted on the BJA performance measures webpage, which can be found following this link. So why do we collect performance measures? Uh, the benefits are twofold for BJA. Uh, the benefits include identifying areas of success and potential areas of improvement uh, to track grant activities and progress towards program goals to understand how funds are being distributed and to comply with the law. The benefits to grantees include identifying areas for improvement to better focus internal efforts, promote the ability to proactively request TTA assistance to address challenges, and it generates evidence of progress towards program goals, which can enhance resource advocacy for sustainability for your program. We wanted to highlight some accomplishments that we've seen from analyzing performance measure data for the MEC program. So for the fellowship awards, uh, 44 fellowships have been funded by the program. 24 participants have completed fellowship training using program funds. 5,945 deaths have been investigated by program funded fellows, and 5,398 5, autopsies have been performed by program funded fellows. For the accreditation awards, 80 individuals are seeking certification using program funds, 16 individuals have achieved certification using program funds and eight organizations have achieved accreditation using program funds. So these are just some examples of how the data that you submit in your progress report go to um, review and get reported to help us show publicly the successes of the program. The uh, FY 2021 performance measures, um, we're gonna talk about those here and some changes that are taking place since last year. 
So there's a purpose area selection in the Just Grants reporting system. Uh, you will select whether your agency's purpose area is dedicated for the accreditation or fellowship activities. And once the selection is made, only the performance metric questions dedicated to that purpose area will be viewable. So the fellowship purpose area will have 16 performance measures and accreditation will have 15 performance measures that you will answer. And the BJA award administration questions and BJA narrative questions will remain consistent. And if you ever have any questions or concerns regarding your questionnaires or any performance measures, please reach out to Mike and I, we're happy to assist you. We have resources available online on the BJA Performance Measures webpage. These resources include performance measure reporting guidance, training videos, data collection, best practices, managing subrecipient reporting tip sheet, and more. So that's available here at the link. We've also provided a link to our YouTube channel so you can find lots of great resources and training there. The Just Grants Help Desk is here for any questions, concerns, issues you're having with Just Grants. So we have the operating hours and contact information here, and you can also view uh, training and resources regarding Just Grants uh, at this link that we've provided. BJA PMT Help Desk is also available. So here are their operating hours and contact email. And here is all of the contact information for all of us here presenting, all of your team. We have our emails and our phone numbers. Please reach out anytime you need assistance. We are all happy to assist you. So we look forward to working with you and making your project successful. Um, we're looking to set up periodic check-ins with you to provide any solutions and just talk to you and learn more about your project. Um, please. Like I said before, don't hesitate to contact us and uh, contact us for scheduling quarterly check-in discussions with your team. So thank you so much for all of your hard work and dedication to the MEC program and for joining us today. Um, I think we have a little bit of time for question and answer, so I'm going to turn it over to Kerwin, I believe. Thanks, Nicole. And as, as Nicole mentioned, we do have a couple of minutes for uh, uh, some brief questions and answers uh, from, for t from today's session. One question that has come in already is, how do I find out where we are, <coughs> are at in the process of the award? I'm not sure if, Monty, this is the part of your presentation, if you would be best to answer that question. Yes. So if your budget isn't approved, then you're still at the point where you're not obligate or spend any funds. So if that's the case, um, just contact your manager, whether it's me, another grant manager, and sort of discuss what withholdings may um, be in place. Another way to look is at that part is when you log into Just Grants and you go under award conditions. Um, this listed is generally anywhere between 40 and 50 of them. Um, but if there's withholdings on them, um, a shortcut is to know that they're more than likely will be towards the end. Um, so I would start backwards from um, depending on how many you have and see which ones show that or say that there's a non compliance. At that point, um, once your budget is uh, approved, then you're free to go ahead and implement the project um, as proposed in your application. Um, we have <clears throat> we'll get one more question in uh, before we close for the day. Uh, this question is, how do I find the requirements for the accreditation? Again, that's, um, you can find the requirements. I'm um, going to the original uh, solicitation um, for that, uh, for your grant award. Thank you, Monty. Um, <clears throat> once again, thank you all today for uh, attending today's webinar. Um, apologies for the technical diff difficulties that we had at the beginning of today's webinar, um, but we <clears throat> thank you for sticking with us. Um, the contact information of the MEC uh, programs uh, team is, is up on the screen, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to uh, one of the, the, the team members, um, or we can be you can send your questions into the PMT help desk. Um, that was, uh, <clears throat> Catherine, if you want to scroll to that slide as well, um, the, uh, the P, uh, PMT help desk, and we'll facilitate your questions through there as well. So once again, thank you all for participating today. 
Uh, we look forward to seeing you again on our future training session. Thank you.